Well, each week a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week sounding off on uh, some of the hot button issues at the 2018 session of the Indiana General Assembly. Anderson touting a positive 2017 and a Colts uh, coaching search in full steam ahead. Our insiders this week, Indiana Chamber of Commerce Senior Vice President and Communications and Operations Editor Tom Schumann, First Person Managing Director Paul Ashley, and also Indy Chamber Chief Economic Development Officer Maureen Krauss. And welcome uh, one and all to the first edition of the Insiders in 2018. Um, uh, brand new session of the legislature. Tom, I'll start with you. I want to get all of your thoughts on this, but uh, short session, 10 weeks or so. Uh, what do you see, uh, in, in your view, as the real hot button issues that are really going to get attention at the state? You know, one of the challenges, Gary, is House Speaker Brian Bosom has already been on record saying they don't know what the next big <laughs> issue is. They, they know there's challenges out there. They know we know workforce is a cr crucial issue dealing with the opioid ec epidemic, but in a non-budget year, mm -hmm. there's, there's certain limitations. Uh, we're certainly going to push for some of that workforce and some of the things to advance the technology agenda, mm -hmm. clarify uh, software as a service, the tax treatment. That's something that's important for our growing technology Yeah, companies. that tech piece I think will be interesting to watch. And also, Tom, again, the workforce. The governor has talked about it. You've talked about it. The Indy Chamber and many others. Uh, you think they'll, they'll, something will be accomplished in your view? Will it be? Well, I know the, the the House is certainly focused on taking a look at, we have so many programs right now that with the money that we get from the federal government, it's streamlining those, making those more effective, and trying to make them employer driven. Really listen to the employers, to what they need, and align the workforce programs to, to those employer yeah, needs. And, and Maureen, I know we were talking off camera, and you, you were talking about very much connected just talent and that, that, that ability to produce that talent pipeline. It is the number one issue for our existing companies and helping them grow, and the number one issue as we look to attract new and diverse companies here. So talent is important from pre-K all the way through mm -hmm. university and retraining of our existing workforce. So we spend at least a billion dollars a year just on the workforce development right. perspective in this state. We need to be more effective, as you point out, more efficient and be employer driven. But not just what the needs are for today, but what are our companies going to need to grow five or ten years in the mm -hmm. future? We need to be looking at that now, talking to companies and making sure we are positioned to to be a leader in this country on preparing the workforce of the future. Do you sense there's that, there's that forward-looking vision uh, at the State House? Um, you know, in talking to them, yeah, I think everyone recognizes something that this is, we, can, we are really good at the state at identifying issues and addressing them and doing something, and I think our next big issue has to be talent, and mm -hmm. um, the conversations we've had, people recognize that, so we're ready to go. Yeah, another issue that's going to get a lot of attention, certainly some headlines will be uh, around alcohol and, yeah. and Sunday sales and also expanded cold beer sales. It appears as though, based on just the chatter, that maybe the Sunday sales may happen, well, cold beer maybe not. These issues they brought up are the real issues that matter, but right. this issue is what voters seem to care about, their consumers. Our alcohol laws mm -hmm. don't help consumers, they help the people who make money off the sales of alcohol, mm -hmm. and they really don't want to change it. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to get this piece of legislation out of the way so we can focus on the true issues that make a difference. I think we were all reminded uh, last Sunday, New Year's Eve fell on a Sunday. <laughs> right. I think it's what, what, four times every 28 years we get yeah. that nice reminder yeah. as Hoosiers uh, why the law probably needs to change. Right. Also, I uh, saw uh, this week uh, news, or in the last week or so, news that Governor Holcomb has authorized pay for performance increases of up to 4% uh, based on evaluations uh, that will be conducted this month. And, and I know as we were talking, uh, you think that's reflective of maybe the labor market. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it's definitely a job seekers market. It is difficult for thoughtful employers to find the talent they need, um, even when they've got a great culture. Um, and so it, it does not surprise me that the state is making a change to wages because they have to be just as competitive as the private employers uh, in, the, in the government sector. Uh, we're seeing it within our compensation practice. It's, it's very normative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we want our state to be managed and run by the best people, just mm -hmm. like a private business does. We want to provide the best you know, bang for the buck on tax dollars that are spent, but you have to be competitive and you have to pay everything from social workers to attorneys mm -hmm. and everyone in between a competitive rate to to not only attract new people, but once again, to keep good people in a very tight labor market. Also had news uh, this week, or in the, the week uh, just passed, uh, several cities uh, in the headlines. Terre Haute uh, launching uh, what they're calling the Haute Initiative to change perceptions mm -hmm. uh, there in Terre Haute. Anderson marking a big uh, year for them in economic development in 2017. The city of Indianapolis neighborhood uh, investment of $66 million. Uh, as you add that all up and mm -hmm. you look at, 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 at what these communities are doing or need to do, 
competitively? Mm -hmm. What's your, your takeaway? First on Terre Haute, you know, that's a region that has a lot of strong assets, but no one else is going to tell your story but you. So the work that they're doing on collectively telling their story, I think will be important for them in helping to promote those assets for growth in their community. When you look at a community like Anderson, they've been very effective at putting together an economic development program that is based on business retention. So 80% of your investment in jobs are going to come from the companies who are already in your community. So you need to work with them and help them grow. But that then helps you attract new companies because you have great success in your community. Your list of who is already there is your first selling point to talk to a new company. So they've done a great job. Um, we continue to, they're part of our region um, in the Indy Partnership, Indy Chamber region. Great partners to have because they get it, as do many of our other communities. Mm -hmm. But they specifically have seen some really significant growth this yeah. year. And, and Tom, it's really a, a, an example of these quality of place initiatives, not just taking place in big metropolitan areas necessarily, but what Terre Haute's doing and Anderson's doing. Uh, Kokomo's a great example right. of some of the things they've, they've done up there as well. We, we've seen it with uh, the Regional Cities Initiative. Mm -hmm in some of the bigger areas over the last few years. And you're right, Gary, it is critical. And, and as you said, it's it, companies and cities have to tell their own story. They are the best ones. And that's critical to what we just talked about, retaining talent and, and building the business base. Yeah, and a, a big piece of the story in northern Indiana, Elkhart, is mm -hmm. RVs. Mm -hmm. We saw news come out this week. A national organization said shipments in November hit an all-time record, RV shipments. That's positive news for Elkhart and Shipshawana and that, that whole area. Too. Well, there were, there were three down years in the RV industry <laughs> right after the recession. They've been on an eight-year run now, record sales the last couple of years. Elkhart County, the RV capital of the world, they face many of the same challenges, though. We, I know you've covered the story, 20,000 jobs open up there yep. looking for skilled laborers. Yeah. And, uh, but it's great for the industry, it's great for the community up there, but again, they and others have to continue it's, to address the, those workforce. Seems the RV industry is, is the bellwether for how the economy is doing. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was, remember when Obama was, uh, President Obama was here right. during the recession, they were focused on Elkhart, and now it's, 20,000 right. open jobs, I and mean, it's it literally, if you want to know how the economy's doing, check the RV industry. Gone from 20% unemployment to 20,000 open jobs. Crazy. Yeah, yeah big swing. Uh, there's been a big swing, a lot of momentum in technology, certainly yeah. in Indiana. Cluster truck, we had uh, co-founder Chris Baggett on the show, the top of our show uh, this week. Uh, a technology idea, it's about food, but it's really is about technology. He's going around the country right now. That momentum in Indiana seems to be pretty yeah. real around technology. So there's two, there's two things that Chris and his team are doing. One is they have great food, right? You have to have a great product. <laughs> but they're using technology and his experience in technology to deliver it differently, better margins, and now they're going to different areas, different cities. They're actually getting calls mm -hmm. from around the country. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you come into insert city here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so people are noticing, and uh, Chris has done a great job. Well, Maureen, what's going to be key in your view to continuing this momentum, in particular here in the Indi Indianapolis mm -hmm. region, for technology? Tom mentioned some of the measures, mm -hmm. the state house that, that, mm -hmm. that the chamber and others would like to see pass. What, what's key? I think it's identifying, or well, we've identified, but recognizing and talking about the fact that we produce a lot of this workforce for the Midwest and for the country with our universities and our mm -hmm. tech schools here. Our challenge is to keep them here. And I think what's happening, we're seeing more of that because of those quality of life issues, if I can sort of tie together everything yeah. we've talked about, that sense of community, whether it's a charming small town uh, that we have so many of here, or the urban environment, which has become a global trend for urbanization, when we can provide the amenities in a community that people want, people nowadays can have a job anywhere. Right. It's a life that they're mm -hmm. looking for. And we're doing a really good job in that from the city of Indianapolis to our much smaller towns mm -hmm. throughout the state. That will help us create more of those jobs, attract more people, and keep more people here who graduate yeah. from our schools. Very good. Tom, last 20 seconds to you. Culture looking for a new head coach. Uh, all eyes on uh, on Ballard and Ursay and the Colts team. Well, as we were talking coming in, it, it, this is really Chris Ballard's time to shine. Yeah. Brought in as general manager. It's, it's his, his hire. Uh, a lot of the questions, however, revolve around uh, that quarterback, number yeah. 12, and how his shoulder's going to be. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how that plays out. Tom Schumann, Maureen Krause, Paul Ashley, thanks very much. And we will talk to you uh, right after we come back from this break. Thanks.